In today's video, I get to fly the first class Qatar Airways doesn't talk about, and boy am I glad I checked it out. I'll show you everything there is to show, from the world famous Al Safwa first class lounge, to the incredible food on board, to the huge first class suite that was all mine for the price of a few air miles. On short and medium distance routes in the Middle East, Qatar markets its premium cabin as first class for historic reasons, but this comes with a mostly inconsistent product. Aircraft swaps are common and you might equally end up in a wonderful Q-suite or natty recliner, meaning it's often not worth spending the money or miles. But if you're flying to Istanbul, well, things are different. We'll cover the 1,714 miles in just under four hours of flying time. Yes, welcome to another video and good morning from the first class Al Sapra Lounge here in Qatar. I am absolutely blown away by this lounge. I'm in a jacuzzi at the airport. We begin today's video in a car ride to the airport. I've been looking forward to this trip for some time and just mentioning to the driver I needed to be dropped off at the first class area was quite the thrill. First class passengers are met and escorted with their luggage through to the exclusive Al Safwa check-in area. Here you'll be sat down, given a hot towel and generally relax while the formalities are completed. This really is exclusive service and a great way to start the trip, but what's waiting for me next is one of the greatest privileges in commercial aviation, the Al Safwa Lounge. My very first stop in the lounge is to see if there are any spa treatments available in their exclusive spa. And I'm in luck, and I'm led to the dressing room. So you can take a shower in here. It seems a bit OTT for just a foot massage, but I've been doing my reading and you can actually get a jacuzzi bath here in the El Safwa lounge. There's just one jacuzzi bath and it takes 45 minutes to prepare. But the therapist has said that she will go and do that for me. So I'm really looking forward to that. Bath in an airport. The spa dressing room is nicer than pretty much any other airport shower suite I've visited. And the treatment itself was excellent. It's not cheap, but I definitely recommend doing this if, like me, you're in here for a one-off treat. Look at this. Whoa. A jacuzzi in an airport. What a time to be alive, eh? Just a word of caution, if you do use the bath here, there is actually no lock on the bathroom door, which is a bit odd. This lounge is exclusively for Qatar Airways first class passengers and Qatar Privilege Club Platinum members traveling business class with Qatar Airways. You can also get access for 600 Qatari Rials, about 165 US dollars, if you don't otherwise qualify and are flying business class. This place is absolutely incredible. Al Safwa opened almost nine years ago, and for me, it is one of my favorite airport lounges I've ever visited. Second, perhaps only to Lufthansa's first class terminal in Frankfurt, which has a more intimate vibe in contrast to the bolshy confidence and enormous open spaces here at Al Safwa. A particular highlight of coming here is getting lunch. There is a full service bar and a restaurant with a super little menu. It's all included, of course, and you can have as much or as little as you like. I was absolutely blown away by the three course lunch, which was even served with an off menu amuse bouche. And the steak was absolutely incredible. The only problem is trying to eat early enough to leave room for my dinner on board, which in Qatar first class is also an event worth looking forward to. There's no doubt this is one of the world's great airline lounges, and to cap it off, even though my aircraft is at a remote stand today, there's private boarding from the lounge. The concierge looks after you, and waiting to be called while drinking lemonade is quite the vibe. Okay, thank you. 
That's great. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. So private boarding from the lounge, and I hope it's a first class bus. Hello, Istanbul. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, thank you. Wow. I've seen pictures of Qatar's legendary first class bus before, but nothing compares to actually being on it. And while we're here, let's quickly explore what I paid for this first class flight. A one-way cash fare from Doha to Istanbul sets you back a cool £3,000. But of course, I didn't pay that. This route is bookable on Avios through the British Airways Executive Club. I paid 52,500 Avios and just £85.10 in fees. It's just me on board this bus and I'm hoping, I'm really hoping I'm the only person in first class on this very special four-hour flight. Today's flight is on a former Cafe Pacific Boeing 777-300ER on lease, hence its unusual white livery. Qatar Airways has four of these aircraft, and they feature a fully specified long-haul first-class cabin as well as a premium economy cabin. Now, Qatar doesn't actually sell premium economy, but if you're flying economy and get this aircraft, you can pay a little extra to sit in it as an extension of the normal economy cabin. And Qatar, well known for equipment swaps, pretty much guarantees the 777-300ER on the first and last daily departures to Istanbul. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's hot, man. Hello. Hello there. Thank you. First class is at the very front and comprises just six enormous seats in a 1 1 1 configuration. Each window seat gets three windows to themselves, and I've chosen 1A for today's flight to Istanbul. I'd rate this as the very best seat on the aircraft, and better than 1K on the other side. Why? Well, the A side has a solid wall separating the aisle from the middle seats, so this is very private indeed. If you've been subscribed to me for a long time, you will definitely recognize these first-class seats from when I flew from Hong Kong to New York via Vancouver with Cathay Pacific in 2018. Apart from a minor facelift and the additions of Qatar's trim colors, these are the very same seats, and I have to say, it does look fantastic. Even with such a mishmash of a fleet, Qatar's brand is so strong, and it's been splashed everywhere over these aircraft. Well, almost everywhere. Our crew today are superb, and I'm soon acquainted with some champagne, olives, and Arabic coffee, as well as the menus, which we'll take a look at a bit later. I'm having a great day. I'm glad you're coming with me too, because these flights are always so much more fun knowing that I get to share them with you guys. Anyway, cheers. And here's to a fabulous flight ahead. If you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. You'll join a community of hundreds of thousands of other trip report enthusiasts exploring the world with me. Did you know that Qatar Airways' maroon color comes from its flag, which in turn gets the color from the ancient purple dye industry on the Al Khor Islands? But that's enough trivia for now. We blast out of Doha to the north and are soon on our way to Istanbul. And now we're airborne, I'll show you some of the seat features of this very private suite. This isn't the latest or most competitive first-class seat, but it is miles better than what you'd likely end up with on most of the airline's Middle Eastern first-class routes. It's not Qatar's own product either, and that's why Qatar doesn't advertise this rather secret first-class anywhere on its website. 
The seat is massive and comes with a ton of storage, even featuring a full-length wardrobe to hang your jacket. Not that we'll be needing a jacket today. Overall, this is an amazing place to spend four hours, or 14. Today's menu features a choice of four appetizers, four mains, and four desserts. And you can dine any time in first and business class on Qatar, and this is definitely a boon if, like me, you ate rather well in the lounge. For the champagne enthusiasts, there are two good bottles on board. I do like the Laurent Perrier Rosé myself, although I've already had three glasses of fizz today, plus a couple of cocktails in the lounge, and I've got a video to film. Qatar Airways does have good Wi-Fi, but even in first class, you still have to pay $10 for it. I'm not sure how I feel about that, to be honest. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Being the only passenger in this first class cabin is so peaceful and relaxing, but it's soon time to eat again. And having heard great things about Qatar's caviar service, I chose this to start. Qatar Airways' presentation of food is always stunning, from the bubble effect caviar plate to the little fake candle to the beautiful water tumblers. They really know what they're doing. So of course I've gone for the caviar now. The cabin crew asked me if I wanted any water and I said yes. And then she asked me if I wanted it neat, to which I said yes. And of course I've misinterpreted her accent and inadvertently consented to having yet another drink. <laughs> Vodka, of course. The perfect little salmon and artichoke amuse-bouche and artisan bread is followed quickly by a mushroom and truffle soup, which was absolutely delicious. For my main course, I stayed true to the locality, a superb Qatari chicken machbous with dakus sauce created by chef Aisha Mohammed Al-Tamimi, and it was absolutely popping with flavor and spice. The banana tart tatan finishes off the meal service perfectly. Five stars in my book and an in-flight meal I won't forget before long. We're soon passing over the mountains of the Armenian highlands over eastern Turkey, a place I'd love to visit by train one day. The airline has good noise-cancelling headphones and a lot of choice on the in-flight entertainment, which, like many airlines from Islamic countries, features a Qibla map to orient Muslims towards Mecca. The screen definitely needs the blinds closed to avoid any glare, but otherwise is a perfectly acceptable size. A very nice diptyque wash kit contains most, if not all, of the amenities you would expect to find, the rest being found in the bathrooms. Now, I remember when deep vein thrombosis was a new panic among air travelers in the 90s. You don't hear much about it now, but airlines still provide compression socks on long flights. Pajamas and comfy slippers were also provided, but on such a short flight, I decided to keep them as souvenirs instead of wearing them. The rest of the amenities can be found in the bathroom. Now, this is actually the smaller of the two first-class bathrooms, but it's still spacious without being too opulent. Of course, it was absolutely spotless all flight, and so it should be, as it was just me on board. The seats convert into a huge lie flat bed, more than sufficient for our flight today, and the bedding Qatar provides is top notch. Soon, we're preparing to descend into Istanbul. What an amazing flight it's been. It's been less than four hours, but it feels like so much longer than that. This has been a really, really good use of those Avios that I saved. Again, it's 52,500 Avios I paid. And wow, it has been quite the experience today. We're sending into Istanbul now, and I've got myself some chocolate. And yeah, what can I say? I really recommend flying this wonderful Qatar Airways product, uh, of course, on lease from Cathay Pacific. I love landing into Istanbul. It's one of my favorite cities, and arriving here is always a treat. 
Let me know if you've been to Istanbul in the comments below and what you think. Overall, Qatar Airways Regional First Class is an enigma. It exists for purely historic reasons, and you might often be disappointed with the aircraft and seat you get if you fly to many places in the Middle East region. But Istanbul, this 777 dedicated to the route, is the real deal, and coupled with Qatar's amazing food and cabin service, the spectacular Al Safwa Lounge, and even the epic First Class bus, heck, this is definitely worth spending the miles for a one-off. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment and thumb up the video. And of course, join me next time for a very exciting trip on one of Europe's stunning sleeper trains, which is one of the best kept travel secrets I've stumbled across. Cheers, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.